Hello, I am coming to talk to you today about enlightenment, um, contentment, and um, feeling validation, acknowledgement, uh, validation from peers, uh, parents, the people in our lives that we think matter or that we are doing this for or to. Um, <laughs> thank you. So, um, I guess I'll start with enlightenment. Um, it's a abstract type of thing. It's not something quantifiable or that has uh, intrinsic value to most. Um, the word itself, you know, enlighten, as in a weight lifted. Um, we have things that weigh us down in our lives. Uh, we have expectations, responsibilities, um, self-doubt, and hatred of ourselves and others that encumber us. And enlightenment in its most simple sense is just to not let those things weigh you down, to be free to fly about and live your life without needing such um, things weighing you down. Uh, I thought for a long time I had reached enlightenment um, probably a little over 10, 15 years ago. Uh, there was some experience in my life that I had some profound revelations and ultimately let it go. Um, unfortunately, and as others might attest to, time and human drama suck us back into those encumberments and we are forced to deal with them again um, and I'd say that it's hard to maintain an enlightened state uh, especially when such struggles and um, pain and suffering uh, fear uncertainty all of these things, they're, they're very human, and we shouldn't be ashamed or afraid to feel these things. And just because you have enlightenment or you um, acknowledged and let those things go doesn't mean they're not real and that they can't still affect your life in various ways. If not directly by you, maybe the people around you. So, um, I guess it's just... The next thing I want to talk about is um, not in not acknowledgement, um, but I can't think of the word right now. Uh, but basically, who we do these things for. Some people do it for themselves. Some people do it for their family. They do it as a competition. They want to be the best, um, the strongest, the most wealthy most accomplished and um, you know I don't want to prevent anybody from achieving their goals but you know I think it's important to understand why we're trying to achieve these goals and um, sometimes in our lives um, you know it can be a rude awakening to know that you know your life is a lie or that what you've been striving for your whole life um, has no meaning and that can be scary um, like I said, some people, they, they pursue money and success and fame and fortune. Um, and these things aren't bad in, in and of themselves. But um, again, let's, let's discuss why somebody would want these things. Um, I'd say human nature in general, especially um, men. Um, I know I had another video saying not to group people in, but... Um, men are looking to procreate they're looking to find a partner and mate and pass on their genes and um whether it's during puberty or as an old man you're constantly even so, if you're not aware of it subconsciously looking to do this and a big part of that in our society today is money um women do not want to be with a man who is poor, uh, has no income, and it's not necessarily 
being shallow or vain, it's, uh, it's a little bit more natural and simplistic in terms of you need money and resources to raise a child in today's society. And women, whether they acknowledge it or not, um, understand this simple fact and therefore look for individuals who carry success and wit and um, fame and, and these opportunities because they want to have those same opportunities for for their offspring um, so at, at its purest form we're all just trying to make babies and, and continue on the uh, human species and there's obviously nothing wrong with that um, but a, as an individual um, not a family or a couple or um, you know looking at those type of things you know it's important to acknowledge who you are um, why you do these things who, who you do them for whether it's yourself for God for your family for your children um, you know, uh, motivations don't really depreciate or take away from your accomplishments, but it's an important part of the philosophical and uh, spiritual journey that we all go on in terms of acknowledging who we're trying to get validation from. Um, so I'll, again, I'll take it back to money um, and my own um, con being content. Uh, you know, in my life, um, I've been content for a long time. Um, you know, there's just a certain point where you have to understand that certain things and factors in your life are out of your control. And it does not help you to get frustrated, angry, lash out, um, or, you know, be upset about these things that you cannot control. And... So I think it's at that point, maybe a little around 10, 15 years ago, I, I've been in poverty most of my life um, in the group homes and been on food stamps since I was 14, um, still on food stamps today. Um, and again, it's, it's, that doesn't bring me shame. Um, I'm very content with what I've been able to accomplish considering how little resources and help I've got from what little friends and family I have. Um, I consider it a miracle to have come this far in my life and am very content and happy with it despite you know, having $5 in my bank account at times, um, and no credit. And to others, this might be terrifying. They might see that and um, they would freak out, uh, maybe call for help, pray or ask friends, family, or just start building a bitterness and resentment towards those who aren't helping them. And I'll admit, I felt that way for a long time too. Uh, I felt resentment for those who had financial situations better than me. And ultimately I, I found, um, upon some self-reflection, I found that's not a fair uh, thing to be angry at somebody for um, they these other people in my life be it friends or family um, have no obligation or duty or law or morally um, to, prov to provide for me as an adult man um, you know I, <laughs> that being said you know I, I was frustrated at times seeing uh, people in my life go spend money on lavish things, uh, vacations and, uh, expensive what have yous where I, you know, I acknowledged, uh, even a small percent of that could change my life. It could pay my rent for the next year or what have you. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very upsetting to watch something that you desperately need be put to what you consider to be frivolous. Um, Again, this is selfish. This is not, I don't think it's an okay sentiment to have. Um, and if you show that resentment and sentiment towards those in your life, you'll only further push them away and give them more reasons to not help you. Um, at the same time, you know, it, if you're really that desperate, it, it doesn't hurt to ask 
in, in every scenario, you know, um, you can be surprised at uh, the hospitality and generosity that some people may have. And um, some of them may even say, oh, well, you never asked, or how would I have known if you didn't say, you know, people can't read minds. And if you're not specifically telling them uh, that you need help and resources, they wouldn't just naturally give them to you. And again, it's a lot of this, they, even if you do ask or beg and explain how drastic uh, your circumstances are, um, you're ultimately putting yourself and your life in the hands of somebody else, which again, is out of your control. So you're only setting yourself up to be frustrated, angry, disappointed, uh, all of these things are negative, um, which is why, again, um, being content, understanding your situation, understanding who and when to ask, um, it's important. And, you know, a lot of times people like to be reciprocal. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, what have I done for this person or what can I do? Even if you don't need or want anything in return, sometimes just reaching out to somebody and saying, hey, you know, I don't have any money or you know, whatever subtext you need to give. I just say, hey, if you need my help or if I can do anything, um, and it doesn't have to be something skill based. You know, you don't have to say, oh, I'll build you a website or build you a deck or whatever your trade or profession is. Uh, it can just be time. You know, a lot of people are lonely and are in situations where they don't get to vent or express themselves properly and it builds up and, um, it's just negative. So sometimes some people just need uh, somebody to listen to their problems. And you'll find that after they say what they need to, they'll be a lot more receptive to what you may need or what they can provide for you. So um, I just think it's important that we all understand um, that, you know, there's, there's a lot more to life than just ourselves and, um, that showing some empathy and kindness to others, even if they're not in need, um, can make dramatic differences in their lives. Um, so being going back to contentness, um, you know, I, I'm not immune from feeling frustration, uh, anger, or um, all the various pettiness and emotions that we all feel. Um, and in Buddhism, they teach that when you try and meditate and clear your mind and, and focus on these things in your life, that it's important to, um, or there, there's a misconception that you should be thinking of nothing, just empty your mind and let it flow, etc. cetera. And um, some people think it's wrong to laugh or think about whatever may be coming to mind and that they should be focusing on this, that, or nothing. And uh, that that's not, what they're trying to teach. Um, there was some, some wise masters who, who say that, you know, these are natural. The, these thoughts are, are human. We should not fight them. But most importantly, we should not give them more energy than they require. Um, when, when these thoughts of anger and frustration come, feel them, explore them, but don't put more time into them than they need. Don't give them more energy than they deserve. Acknowledge that you feel this way. Think about why you feel that way. What you could potentially do to resolve it. And then you need to move on. There, there's no point in holding on to these things. Um, one of the wisest things I've heard about anger and frustration and stuff is um, a metaphor where... Uh, I, there's two of them I'd like to share. Uh, the first one is about... Um, revenge and I believe it goes something like revenge is like holding on to a hot stone uh, that's on fire I guess um, with the intention of throwing it at somebody who hurt you and the result is you are the one who gets burned you're the one holding on to the fire and therefore you are consumed and burned by it uh, the other one uh, was a, a metaphor about arrows where um, when somebody tries to hurt you with their words or their actions, it's like an arrow that falls short on the ground, but then you pick that arrow up 
and stab yourself with it and say, look, look what you're doing to me, what you've done to me, as if that negative action that they threw your way, even though it didn't hurt you, you're now hurting yourself by um, thinking about it and giving it more energy and focusing on it, um, whereas the other person probably um, has long since forgotten or doesn't nearly spend as much energy or time thinking about those matters. I think it's important for all of us to acknowledge and accept who we are. Um, you know, a lot of us, like I said, we, we, we can be quick to anger and feel these emotions of uh, frustration and hatred. Um, and you might be resentful about politics or religion or some, some sort of betrayal that happened to you from a, a friend or loved one or somebody close to you. Um, and the, it's okay to feel those things. Um, it's not okay to give them all of your energy and for, for those hatreds to become who you are. And for a lot of people, they never know where to draw that line. They never know where, <laughs> where feeling them is different than giving them power and uh, actuating themselves in your life in, in some way. Uh, for myself, uh, you know, I get frustrated with people and I'll constantly have internal, um, not really conversations with myself, but uh, more like monologues that I'll go on where I just am, you know, saying hateful, nasty, and personal things about whoever I'm mad about. Um, and that's just a part of who I am. I, I'm not ashamed of this. Um, you know, I, it, it's, we, we all have these feelings, uh, but again, it's what are you putting back out? Um, I try not to give it too much energy. Um, when I feel these things, I embrace them and I give them the energy they require at that moment in terms of, oh, this horrible name or curses that I throw their way and then it's over and I feel better. I feel a weight lifted, um, you know, as opposed to holding it in, you, you can feel a constriction in your chest, uh, the stress, the anxiety, the frustration, they can just build and grow and, and you end up just torturing yourself. Whereas the person you're angry at is just busy living their lives and has no idea that you're going through this internal struggle or saying or thinking up these horrible things about them. And um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to, you know, talk about being content, being acknowledged, um, enlightenment in terms of what we need to focus on, um, what it means to let go, and um, again, you know, a lot of this stuff comes down to our values. Um, some of us never thought or sat down to think about what our values are and why we have these values and what it means to go against or have different values. Um, I'd say I learned the most about values from one of my philosophy classes where my professor was also a couples therapist, and it was a very interesting combination, but he had many fascinating stories uh, of couples that would come in. Um, and ultimately, he uh, it boiled down to incompatible values. Um, the example that sticks in my mind was a, a man who, uh, his mother was a big part of his life. Um, you know, she would be there for dinners and take care of certain things. I don't believe they lived together, but um, they had like a somewhat codependent relationship where his values were honoring and loving and having his mother be a part of his life. And his wife um, wanted all of that attention to herself. She did not want to share this man's love with another woman, be it his mother and um, ultimately they were not compatible and they broke up and it's these type of situations where you might have a chemistry uh, romance uh, be it physical mental or otherwise but um, 
I think it's important for every relationship to sit down and uh, if they think about getting married or taking it on a more serious level, they, they should really sit down and, and have this discussion about what's important to me. What are my values? And, um, you know, are they compatible with my the person I'm trying to be with? And you may be shocked to find out that you do not have compatible values. Um, you know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of people have come from different religious or uh, socioeconomic backgrounds where um, certain things may be more important to them than others. Uh, for example, if somebody who comes from a lower class um, society and they value um, interpersonal reactions, at, um, such as being kind to wait staff and your server and employees of various places that you visit, um, whereas somebody of a higher class may be more prone to being critical of these people and giving them a harder time or feeling more privileged about, oh, let me talk to the manager or cause this or I need this or that and without saying thank you. Um, we're just acknowledging the other person and, um, you know, these, these things, these values that we hold are who we are really they, they're probably what I would define as our soul um, it's it's what's important to us it's why we do the things we do in our lives and it makes us who we are and therefore is critical to acknowledging and understanding who you are and where you fit in not just in this world but in other people's lives be it a significant other or friends and family you might find that you don't share the same values that they have and that ultimately this might be um, something that might separate you, um, be it temporary or permanently. Um, for me, I, I've found that some of uh, the people in my lives uh, come from a, a little bit higher classes and don't seem to understand or acknowledge um, the hardship that some of these lower class people go through and um, they say and do sometimes offensive things or hold sentiments uh, that are just offensive to, to people like myself. Um, the example I heard recently was that uh, poor people just aren't motivated, that everybody in poverty or who isn't a success or wealthy and um, in good shape is just lacking motivation. And I find this is a very limited worldview. Um, and I found it personally offensive. Um, you know, there, there's other, I, I myself am not um, limited at, as much as others, but you know, we, we had a conversation about Chicago and how uh, they have some of the highest crime and poverty and rates in the world. And the conversation ultimately uh, from the person from the higher class said, you know, they're just not trying hard enough. If that were me, I'd move out of there. And it's so easy to imagine what you would be able to do in these scenarios and kind of compartmentalize them in terms of, oh, I could just do this and that. When to the people living in those areas, they don't have those opportunities. Um, they're not able to just hop on a bus or plane and start a new life in a, another city or another place that doesn't have as much crime. It, it's not as easy as just doing it and, or lacking motivation. Um, I had even brought up points that, you know, these people, they come from these ghettos and these, these areas where they're filled with drugs and crime and that is usually your only opportunity for success. Uh, even if it's through crime, uh, as opposed to what other opportunities are for these people. And you might even be one of those people that, oh, I'll never touch a drug or affiliate with a gang or anything, and, and you still get shot down. Um, some people in those communities resent those who are doing better than them and take the other path and will hunt them and kill them just for that reason. Um, and you know, maybe a few people do get out, but you know, I just thought how, how offensive to boil down millions or billions of people are just lazy. 
and that they're just not trying hard enough and there's no excuses to not work out or go to the gym or get that better job and um i'd say that there's a lot of good reasons why they can't do these things um most of these people that that are trying to make it uh you know they're working two three jobs they have kids and families and people are dependent on them and <laughs> i don't understand what how they would have time to go to the gym or work out or change their diet or go back to school when every waking second of your life is putting out fires and dealing with tragedy and frustration that your rent doubles every few weeks or whatever it may be you, you get a demoted or a 10 cent raise after being there 10 years it's you know people from these higher classes i don't think really understand um how dramatic the difference of our opportunity and um, choices that uh, we have. And, um, you know, I, I don't blame these people that have to resort to crime. Again, resorting to meaning they have no other choice. It's either do this to make money and survive or waste away, die, go to jail, uh, whatever it may be it's 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 not good um i guess i'll i'll end this video um here in terms of um going over feeling contentness and um frustration and enlightenment in terms of um trying to let these things go um but you know i just want to end it with you know it's okay to feel frustration it's, it's okay to have anger and hatred and jealousy and, you know, want to do right for yourself. And it's okay to be motivated and try and do better and be better and accomplish your goals. Um, there's nothing wrong with these things. But I just want people to just take a moment to acknowledge that, you know, we don't all have the same opportunities. We don't all have the same struggles and values and what might affect somebody from a higher class like if they lost their job and all their money they might kill themselves whereas I've been living in poverty and despair my whole life and um, it would take a lot more to uh, affect me in the same way uh, I, I also had a I, know I was gonna send it end it here but uh, I had an interesting conversation with somebody about that in terms of um, tolerance um tolerance to some people are uh, in the context of drugs and marijuana are you know a, a seasoned marijuana smoker can smoke a giant amount of marijuana and be completely unfazed because their tolerance level is so high it doesn't really affect them uh, or nearly in the same way as somebody who has a low tolerance uh, like a, a new or first time smoker who uh, even smoking a tiny percentage of what the other person could would completely affect their mental state and de destabilize them, make them trip or feel or um, feel out of control. Um, and again, this is tolerance. Uh, we have there's other tolerances like tolerances to pain and uh, other things that can be built up. And um, just in general, that is just what I'm talking about. But I'd say that uh, the interesting conversation I had about this was that there's a tolerance to depression, a tolerance to pain and frustration and stuff that having been in it my whole life, um, my tolerance level for these things is very high, meaning I need bigger and more dramatic and drastic challenges or tragedies in my life uh, to feel the despair and depression and emotions that I felt when this was first happening to me and it felt like it was the worst thing in the world. Um, so again, I, I, I just want to take a point there to talk about tolerance and that, you know, some of these people from higher classes uh, have a very low tolerance for depression and pain and suffering and frustration um, because they're used to having these things 
taken care of for them, uh, solved for them, uh, you know, my lawyer can this, or I'll just move in with this person, or whatever it may be, whereas people in lower class or other situations, um, they have a higher tolerance for these things. Um, I don't wish these things upon myself. I'm not, I'm definitely not asking for harder or more di difficult things. I'm just trying to merely state that, um, you know, the things that depressed me before, um, pretty much un I'm unfazed by now. Um, again, and that's a, just my own personal enlightenment, my own contentment um, with what I've done. And I, I could pass away today and be very content with what I've done. I have no regrets. I, there's nothing I wish I did or could have done. Um, that doesn't mean I want to die today or, or need to by any means. I'm just saying, um, you know, some people feel like their life hasn't been fulfilling. And at the age, today is my 35th birthday and, and I'm very content and satisfied with my life. And if I were to pass away today, I have nothing but um, appreciation and joy for the opportunity I had to live in this beautiful world and have the opportunity to be my best friend Liberty here. Um, so, um, you know, but other, other people aren't in the same place in life and they still feel like they need to prove themselves or accomplish this, that, or the other to, to feel this same validation uh, or success or whatever you want to call it and you know I, I don't have the answer for everybody everybody's on their own journey and has different reasons and goals and uh, for why they want to do these things and some people do it for an afterlife they think that I'll go to heaven or I don't want to go to hell and that is the sole motivation for <laughs> being good or trying to do good in any which way um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I, I'm not doing this for a reward. I'm not doing this for an afterlife or because I'm trying to impress anybody. Um, you know, I've just experienced a lot and, um, I'm privileged enough to have worked through and been in therapy for 25 years where I, uh, I, I learned various coping skills and um, these mechanisms that help me and shape me into who I am and shape my worldview. So I just um, wanted to share that with whoever cares to listen. And um, even maybe well after I'm gone from this world, um, you know, maybe some of the things I say might help influence or um, help somebody and um, to me, that, that makes it worth it. So um, thanks for listening.